I am blushing at Anthony's kindness, so I'm glad the lights are low up here. Thank you all for being here. Um, this is a film that is making quite a buzz on the festival circuit. It's screened in New York at the Film Forum in October. It's screened at the Cannes Film Festival. It's screened at the Palm Springs Film Festival. So I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Anthony and the Nanabig Institute for making it possible for us to see us. Um, we're really fortunate to have such a rich film culture here at Notre Dame, and the Nanavik Institute is a great supporter of it. This is a film about a book, and here's the book. Pretty much anybody who teaches Hollywood film has this book in his or her office. Uh, the gray cover is the second edition, which came out after Hitchcock's death and had more material added to it. I'm told by people who were active scholars in the 1960s when this book came out that you could not call yourself a film fan of any kind unless you had read this book. So it really is one of the classic works of film history and film criticism. It is, um, this is a documentary about this book, and the book consists of interviews that the French director Francois Truffaut conducted with Hitchcock in August of 1962. The book didn't come out um, until 1966 in France and 1967 in the U.S., I think because Hitchcock, or not Hitchcock, but also Truffaut, made a few films in between. So the question for us is, why did this French director, Francois Truffaut, want to interview Hitchcock? What was it about his work and about that combination that interested um, him? Now Truffaut, we have students here in our Global Cinema 2 class, and I know that they're talking about the French New Wave in class. Um, so they and many of you will recognize Truffaut as one of the great French directors of the 1950s and 1960s. He was 27 when he made his first film, 400 Blows. There's a still from that um, in the bottom left there. And then a few years later, he made uh, Jules et Jim with Jean Moreau, um, which is a favorite, I think, of many people in this room. And that is, I love that picture of him because you see his youthfulness, his energy, his, his intellect, his sense of style, um, his very Frenchness. Um, and he, he loved film. He loved everything about them. He started watching films seriously at the age of seven. And when he was 14, he dropped out of secondary school to become a film critic and operate a film club. And his prodigious interest in film drew the attention of some of the big French critics of the era. So he was steeped in film from a young age. He was also a critic. Many of the, the major French directors of the French New Wave, such as Godard, Eric Romer, Claude Chabrol, also wrote as critics. And they founded a magazine called Cahiers du Cinéma that uh, has been translated, and there are collections of essays from it. And their goal was a strategic one. At that time in France, they felt the cinema that was valued was cinema that was based on great works of literature. And they wanted to draw attention to the value of film as an art form in itself. So they wrote about directors' creative use of editing, of lighting, of um, cinematography, of set design. And Hitchcock was one of the people um, that they praised to the skies. And you can see these, these covers from some of the issues of Cahiers, um, uh, Dial M for Murder there, and then Hitchcock framing a shot there. So the uh, editors and writers at Cahiers wrote voluminous amounts about Hitchcock, and he knew that. So Truffaut decided that he wanted to actually sit down with Hitchcock and talk to him. So he wrote this letter, and this comes from Hitchcock's papers at the Academy Library in Los Angeles. I have noted that on the whole, this is Truffaut to Hitchcock, there is too often a superficial approach to your achievements. Moreover, now that I am a filmmaker, my admiration was, if anything, increased. I am asking, therefore, whether you would grant me an interview to be tape recorded over the span of a week. It will make up a book to be published in New York and Paris simultaneously. Now, what director wouldn't want to get this letter from a French filmmaker who was renowned in France and, and gaining a great deal of fame around the world? And this letter came to him shortly after the release of Psycho. So one question for us is, what was it, I mean, there's the obvious appeal in this letter, but why did Hitchcock react very positively um, to this request? And a lot of it was because of 
his own standing within American cinema. He was deeply respected. There were American critics who appreciated his work, Andrew Saris, for example, um, Robin Wood, who was English, but also lived in the United States. So Hitchcock was, was very well respected, very famous, but in the 1960s, and he himself was in the, his 60s at that point, he began to be concerned about elevating his reputation so that his films were not just popular and well-liked, but that they were respected and that he, he wanted his work to be appreciated for the creativity and artistry and ingenuity um, that they demonstrated. And this was, you know, he was making thrillers, he was making television programs, so he was straddling the, the boundaries between high art and popular culture, and he wanted to push his reputation more into the high art category. So what better opportunity than to have this French critic, um, who was very respected among um, cultured people, um, talk with him for a week and get the word out um, about his films. Now one of the, the things that I love about the book, and you see it to some extent in the film, is that Truffaut very freely praises elements of Hitchcock's work. And sometimes he'll offer his own interpretation. So he'll say, for example, well I'm sure in Spellbound you intended this, or I'm certain in Notorious you intended that. And you can see Hitchcock saying, why yes, Yes, that is what I intended. Yes, it was. So there are, there are moments when we get the sense that Truffaut may be giving Hitchcock insights into his own work. Um, this is, there were stills taken of the interviews. Most of it's audio tape, but there were stills made. Um, and that's one, and it was turned into that uh, for the cover of the DVD. It is out on DVD in French, but I don't think it's available yet um, in English. Now, one of the reasons this book is a landmark for anybody who's interested in film and why we still assign it um, to our classes is that it's very lavishly illustrated and it's illustrated with images like this that blow up individual shots of the film so you've got whole pages let me see find a good one here there we go whole pages that demonstrate the lighting um, the editing patterns this is a very famous shot sequence from psycho um, where there's a graphic match, so the, the shots are matched visually in terms of shapes and patterns, a graphic match between C, which is the drain of the shower, and D, which is Miriam's, Marion's um, eye as she's lying lifeless on the bathtub, and then the camera zooms back and we see um, the evidence that she's dead. But it's that immediate juxtaposition of the drain and the eye that is, that is emblematic of Hitchcock's creativity. And it's the kind of thing that Truffaut was interested in talking to him about um, and in helping a wider audience appreciate. Now, the book took, it was four years, as I said, before it was published in France. But uh, they still kept in touch. And they helped each other in the meantime. So in 1963, when The Birds was coming out, the Museum of Modern Art held a Hitchcock retrospective, so he was in a museum. It was the largest Hitchcock retrospective ever held to that time, and it was meant to coincide with the release of The Birds, so it was part of Hitchcock's general effort to, to elevate um, his work. So he wrote to Truffaut and said, aren't you doing a chapter on The Birds in this book? And Truffaut said yes. He said, would you mind publishing it as a separate essay so that it will help to promote the film and celebrate the Museum of Modern Art retrospective? And that is exactly what Truffaut did. So before the book was even published, parts of it appeared strategically um, in ways that were intended to help elevate Hitchcock's reputation. And this same year, 63, he was <coughs> notified that the government of France wanted to award him the Legion of Honor. Um, and there's certainly a link between this well-respected French filmmaker praising his work um, and his own success in the United States. So I think we can say that it was a very um, productive and helpful collaboration for both of them. The other thing that's wonderful about the documentary that we're going to see tonight, ooh, our system up here acts up sometimes, it even does this in class, okay is that in addition to the stills and the audio tapes from the interviews that make up this book, 
Um, the film incorporates interviews with a number of contemporary filmmakers, such as Martin Scorsese, um, Wes Anderson, Olivier Assayas, and others, who talk about the impact of Hitchcock on their work, but also the impact of this book. And it's really fascinating in an age of ebooks to hear these noted directors hold up their tattered copies um, that are falling into pieces and talk about how this was one of the first books of film they discovered and they've read it cover to cover 10 times and they still refer to it. So it's a real testament to the enduring value of this particular book and of this moment um, in film criticism when people were finding ways to talk about the artistry of cinema. So as I mentioned, um, we still assign this to classes and, and you might want to read it um, when the film is over, but I hope that you enjoy this documentary tonight. So thank you very much.